Hello everybody, welcome to a mind test modding tutorial. I recently had a request on my website, or maybe it was the YouTube comments, I honestly don't remember, to do a short video explaining how you would go about making things like kitchen appliances where you can put something into an input, you know, click a button and get something else out as an output. So I actually went ahead and created some code. It's very sloppy, very messy. Do not use it in its current state. It needs a lot of work. But um, I'm not actually interested in making a mod that can do this. I'm just doing this for the tutorial. So I just wrote the code that's necessary. So I have two different types of methods of going about this. And we have a simple toaster and an advanced toaster. And basically, well, let's take a first take a look here. So I created this quick little mod called Toaster, and we have slices of bread, which honestly look um, these three look exactly identical, but I'm positive I changed the. Now that I'm thinking about it, though, maybe I didn't change the textures for all of them. That could be why they look identical. But anyways, we have a slice of bread. Slice of toast, toasty toast, burnt toast, and very burnt toast. And so what we can do, if uh, if we have some toast, or some bread rather, let's take a bunch of bread here. We can throw a piece of bread into the, you know, the basic toaster here. Click start. Three seconds later, this will change to a slice of toast. And then we can actually take that slice of toast and throw it in there and click start. And three seconds later, we'll get a slice of toasty toast. And I believe that's all I programmed it to do. I don't think we will ever get to the stage beyond toasty toast. No, it will not go beyond that. Um, we can also put anything else into this input slot. Nothing will ever happen for anything else that we put in there, but we can. So you would probably want to code it. So you can only put items in that are supposed to be placed in there. And then we have the advanced toaster which I only um, gave them different names like that so I could keep track of what was what and here we can put our slice of bread in click start three seconds later we get toast we click start three seconds later toasty toast click start again another three seconds elapses we get burnt toast and then one last time we get very burnt toast if we click start again nothing happens and once again, we can still put anything else in there. Nothing will happen. Uh, we can also put multiple of an item in. I actually didn't check this, but yeah, we only get one back. So again, some more things you would definitely want to change in the code. So you don't have that. You'd also you know, want to make entirely different textures and form specs, but we're not discussing those. We're discussing the code. So let's go ahead and jump on over into the code and take a quick look see at what we have so we have all of these um craft items our bread toast one toast two toast three toast four for the very burnt toast and yes i am just an idiot and i did not give these things that should be one this should be two i just didn't give them the correct inventory images which is why they were displaying all the same but again, that's really not the point of this video. So here we have our simple toaster. Let me actually go ahead and increase the size of this a little bit. That looks good. Maybe a little too big, but you know, whatever. So we just have a simple node registered. Um, there's one image for the top, all the sides and the bottom actually use the same texture on the side. Again, nobody cares about that. Uh, when we construct the node, we are creating an input slot, which was that one up in the corner. And then we're creating that start button and this is the player inventory and here we're initializing the inventory for input where you can put an item pretty pretty basic stuff on receive field so when you click the button this block of code runs and now this is the the simple version now the simple version is good for two things one when there's only a very few number of nodes that you can process in it or maybe i should say items so like here, when you click start, it checks if your input is toaster bread or toaster toast one. And then it starts the timer if it is either of those two, which is why anything beyond that would never start the timer because it's not in this table. Now, another thing you could do right here, which I actually did in the second, 
is you can just check if it is in a group. So in my case, I added all of those slices of bread and toast to a group called Toastable. So if the input item, which is the item name right here, is in group Toastable equaling one, which all of them did, then uh, I just did some debugging code here. It'll start that timer. This only works, however, if you personally are adding, well, it doesn't have to be you personally, but the mod is adding the items that you are processing in the node because if this was oh i don't know say default apple well default apple doesn't have a group toastable so either i'd have to override that item and give it the group toastable which could be done or i have to stick with this method here the group method works really well when you are creating all of the items that can be processed in the node it might not work quite so well if you're using items that another mod is providing so that's why we have this. And you would just keep repeating this list until you had um, all of your items. I think you could also do if input equals toaster bread or toaster toast one and just do a long chain of ors. I believe that would work as well. I didn't try it, however. So either way, we're starting a timer for three seconds. When the timer goes off, three seconds later, we check our input again to make sure that this didn't happen and let me actually um, hop on back over into mind test and we'll take a look at what could happen so if you were if you were mr. speedy Gonzalez oh I didn't do that here we go I pulled the item out of inventory out of the inventory yeah, it's still going to oh that's the advanced one <laughs> yeah nothing's gonna happen there so let's take a slice of bread throw it in inventory click start pull it out real quick so we just stole our item back. We potentially could get. Oh no! Of course we couldn't because this is still here. <laughs> let me let me demo that real quick. So let's take out this, and we'll just comment out this block of code. Um. That's actually difficult to do that way, so we'll just comment it out this way, and then we will comment out this code. So here we're just doing, uh, when the timer goes off, we're replacing the bread with the toast. So now if we jump back to my test, I actually have to re reload it real quick. All right. Slice of bread in the toaster. Slice of bread out of the toaster. Start button was clicked. Uh, we also got uh, an error that toast bread one doesn't exist. So that's cool. But anyways, you see we just uh, created material that we sh shouldn't have been able to create. So that is why, if I click on the right button, that is why we are double checking our inputs to make sure the item is still there and that we are swapping the item and not actually giving the player an extra item. And of course, if your timer was only set for a second, you might not have to worry about that because you'd be hard pressed to grab the item out in a second. Or if you had it just an instantaneous thing, you wouldn't have to worry about it at all. But because there is a timer, we're just double checking, make sure the item's still there before we give them the next item along. So this is one way to do it. There is a, a more advanced, a more, a more better way of doing it which is right here. And they both have their pros and cons. Now the advanced toaster looks very much the same. Um, we're doing pretty much the same things here. Uh, here, however, we are, I can get rid of these prints. We are just checking if it's in that toastable group that I talked about before. And we can do that because I'm the one that added all of those craft items of the slices of bread and toast. So they're all in the group toastable. So that's a safe thing to do. So we're just checking that, just one simple check. We don't care about what the specific item is. We just need to know if it's in the group. If it is, we start the timer at one. What you could actually do is you could, depending on what you're making, if you want something to take longer to process, you could set a higher group, you know, level two, level three, level four, and then do if it equals one, then the timer for this. If it equals two, you know, timer, something different. This is where it gets impressive though. 
on timer. So when the timer calls off three seconds later, we're checking what's in our input stack again because we want to make sure there's still an item there. The player didn't grab it out and trying to get a free item. Those sneaky, sneaky players. And now here, I made the font too large so we can't see the whole line, but we have a local of return product. And all we're doing is we are checking against the table that my test ha has when you start a world. It creates a table of every single registered node, every single tool, every single item. So we are checking against the table, my test registered items in stack get name, which is the item that's in our input slot. So all we're doing pretty much is returning, you know, say toaster bread. And then we are setting the input stack to, again, we're going off of this table value here, and we are looking at the returns element of that. And now that we need to reference back up to our craft items. So when you create an item, a craft item, a node, anything you want, there's always that set of items, those values that you populate. And normally when you register a craft item, you have a description, you have your groups, inventory image, you might have some callbacks you do. You usually don't have a returns field or value or key or whatever you want to refer to it as. That is something I added. And it's literally as easy as just typing in returns and then what is returning. So all I did was say, well, if I'm toasting the bread, bread should return toast number one. If I'm toasting toast number one, it should return toast number two. And so on and so forth. Toast two should return toast three. Toast three should return toast four. I got stuff all screwed up in here, but whatever. Toast four though, you'll notice, is A, not in the group toastable, because you can't cook it any past very burnt toast, and it also doesn't return anything. It doesn't have to return anything because you can't cook it. And even if you could cook it, there's no more burnt level than very burnt toast. So those two are simply just not there. So this returns value is available in that table. So all we're doing is just pretty much this is a, I don't know if this is the key. I think this is the key in a table. It's like the lookup key or something. And then this is the, the something other key. I don't know what this technical terms for it is. So I'm definitely qualified to be talking about it. But that's all we're doing. We're just pulling that value from returns that I threw up in that registration. And that's what we're setting into the inventory stack. And that's it. That, that's all there is. It's super easy. Now, of course, this is this is just scratching the surface. If you actually want to do this and do it right, um, you're definitely going to want to add some more callbacks. Let me just zoom out so we can see a little more here. So in addition to on receive fields, you would probably want to have one like allow metadata inventory put. So you can only put in specific items. In the case of the toaster here, you probably only want to let them put in one item per inventory slot because otherwise, uh, as you saw when I did several slices of bread, I lost all of them but one that was returned as a piece of toast. Or you could allow multiple items, but you would just want to make sure when you set the item, you're setting the same value of whatever they had in that inventory slot. So again, they're not losing items. And you might want to change it so you're not just clicking a button. Maybe it needs to have fuel that would require something more in lines with like what the furnace uses, the code along those lines. Um, but this is just uh, kind of something to get your toes wet, kind of give you an idea of how it would work. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much, pretty much it. You'd, uh, you know, you'd want to have some other, some other checks and things so you make sure you don't crash, you know, um, because like in this one here, let's actually demo this. Can we demo this? Um, I'd have to add something to the group toastable that does not. So all we have to do is I will just go ahead and do this. And this, I believe, is going to crash. 
So we just added toastable, but we didn't add a, a value to this returns section. So let's see what happens when we try to toast some very burnt toast in this machine. So we have our very burnt toast. Let's throw a slice in there. And it should crash because it can't index a empty field. Okay, it actually just returned me nothing. So that's neat. I mean, it's neat that the whole thing didn't crash. It's not neat that I lost my item. But again, that's why you have to have those checks. Because uh, if you don't, you're just going to... You're going to make your your user base very unhappy. But that is kind of just the basics of how to go about setting these kind of things up. Um, of course, you know, like I said, the code I have, which will be provided on my website, um, I'll probably just put the whole... I, I really don't want to call it a mod because it's, it's so horrible and horrific. But I'll just uh, zip the whole thing and I'll have it available on the web page. That coincides with this video so you can download it and actually see the code right there copy and paste bits you know things like that again um i wouldn't really recommend just straight up using this code directly without fixing the flaws and errors because it, i did not program it that well i programmed it just to work and to demo but i did not program it to catch any user errors and gracefully recover from them so if you use it as is, you can expect some crashes if you do things that you shouldn't be doing, basically is what I'm saying. But thanks for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed and it was helpful. And uh, be sure to like it, of course. And tune in next time for another amazing MyTest video. And I will see you then.